welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we're doing a rebatch soap. I've got my bucket here that I do all my soap when I trim my bars and uh, if I have any soap scraps they go in this bucket. Well it's full, it's time to rebatch. Um, sometimes I do confetti soap but I'm going to do a rebatch today. I'm going to get my crock pot out, put my soap shavings in there. Last time I did a rebatch, I did a video of it, I added a little too much liquid. And so today I'm going to use less liquid. I'm going to try and whip it again, do a whipped soap rebatch, and uh, we'll see if it comes out a little better, the consistency this time. So I'm going to get my crock pot, get my hair pulled back, and I don't need gloves on because these are already pretty much not cured, but uh, they're ready to go. So it's a low-tech process, but I'll bring you along as we try to make some whip rebatch. This is take two. I'm going to try it. Hopefully this one will have a little better consistency. So let's get to making soap. And if you enjoy watching my videos, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe. And I'm on Facebook and Instagram too. So I've got all of my soap shavings uh, and bits. There's some chunks in here. This is just a lot of soap scraps from all the soaps that I've made over the last several months, about three months worth. There's kind of, some of these are fresher than others, but um, there's nothing in here that's less than a week old. So it's all been saponified. It's fine to touch with bare hands. There's no raw soap in here. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, this is 44 ounces of soap scraps in here. And so to this, um, I am going to be adding some sodium lactate. And as this melts down, that's supposed to help keep it a little more fluid and pourable um, and a little smoother. So at a rate of about a half teaspoon to a teaspoon per pound of soap shavings. And this is a little more than two and a half pounds of soap shavings in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two teaspoons There is my two teaspoons of sodium lactate in here. And what I'm gonna do for um, my liquid portion, because these are pretty fresh, just a couple months. Um, they're not super, super dried out. So I'm going to go ahead and add my coconut milk powder over the top of this and then I'll just add some distilled water instead of reconstituting this because I want to get a nice amount of coconut milk powder in here, um, but not a lot of liquid. So there we go. I did three teaspoons, so that would be a, you know, a rounded tablespoon is about what I've got of coconut milk powder in there. And now let me get my water. Because these soap shavings are relatively fresh, I am gonna be adding about three ounces of distilled water for now. And if I need to add a little bit more later, I can do that. So it's better to start, this was my lesson I learned last time, it's better to start out cautiously and add more rather than add too much on the upfront part. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I just have this on low, my crock pot's on low. This is a real slow process. It's a great thing to do on a busy day when you've got other things going on in your soap studio if you need to label or organize. It's nice to just set your crock pot and we'll just be coming back in and stirring this every so often until it starts to melt down. And then we can come in with my handy dandy blender here. This thing is so old. <laughs> I love this thing. Anyway, um, come in and start whipping it and getting it really smooth out. So it's on low and I'm just gonna put the lid on and let it start to melt and we'll come back in about maybe 15 or 20 minutes and check on it and see how we're doing. It's been about 10 to 15 minutes here. You can see some condensation. It's heating up very slowly, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to mush down and see how we're doing. Get that uh, coconut milk powder sort of mushed in here. It's not really stirrable yet, but just sort of flipping it around. I wanna heat it as evenly as possible. And some of the soaps on the bottom here are starting to melt. So, like I said, it's a slow process. So what I'm, my plan is, you can see there's just so many different colors, there's a lot of different fragrances, even though it's not offensive, all the different smells together, it's not, you know, a total car crash of scents, just smells a little fragrant. But um, after this gets all melted and smoothed out, I will then decide uh, if I wanna color this and if I wanna add any fragrance to it at all. Um, 
So we don't have to decide that right now. I'm just going to sort of mesh it around and see what we end up with and then we can decide from there. So you can see it's already starting to shrink down here and just judging from how it's looking I will probably end up adding another ounce or two of water uh, probably the next time I stir this I think I will add just a little more water we're just going to add it a little at a time and uh, hopefully not go overboard but you can already see how that's shrunken down as it starts to melt so back with the lid let it sit for another 10 or 15 minutes we'll poke it around and maybe add just a little bit more water next time it's been another 10 minutes and I'm just going to pop the lid off and add about one ounce of water to what we've got going here. Put the lid back on. I'm not even going to stir it. Just let it sit there and steam and we'll be back. And it's been about 20 minutes since I added that last ounce of water. So let's starting to get real kind of sweaty and mushy in here. Let's get it mixed around. Oh yeah, it's definitely getting softer now. I don't know if I'm going to need to add any more water. We're going to see. It's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to let it ride like this for a while. Now, as these colors all blend together, we're going to turn this really not attractive, <laughs> sort of mashy, grayish, beigey color. And so that's why we're probably going to end up, I'm almost definitely going to end up adding a color to this. I just wanted to show you now, this is kind of cute and speckly. Um, if I wanted to just plop this in the mold right now and just have, you know, soap for home use or whatever, it's fine. You know, it's fluid enough to throw in the mold, but I want this to be smooth and whipped um, and fluid. So we're going to keep going. But you know, that's when you rebatch, uh, there's no hard and fast rules. You kind of just do it to the point where you like it. So just depends on what you're going for. I want to try my hand at whipping this again and making a really light, fluffy, floating type soap. But uh, you definitely don't have to do that when you're rebatching. You can just melt it down and throw it in a mold and you've got perfectly good soap. So actually, I am going to stick this in here and just sort of whip it up. Hopefully the um, you know whipping of this will break up some of these chunks. So I'm going to just do this for a minute and see if we can break up some of those bigger chunks here. And then I'll just simply pop the lid back on and uh, we'll let it go another maybe 20 minutes and come back and do this all over again. All right, it's been another 20 minutes and we're going to I'm going to come straight in with my um, little whippers here and just blend away. It's coming along really nice. It's still got some chunks in there that need to be melted, but um, it's coming along pretty good. I think that I'm not going to add any more fluid right now. Yeah because I'm right at that point where it's tempting to add some more, but it's not fully melted, and um, I might regret it if I do. So I'm <laughs> going to hold off. Even though it's tempting to add just a little more, I'm going to wait and see. So back on with the lid. Uh, I wanted to talk about this is um, most of the fragrance is actually steaming off of this and it's just basically smelling kind of like um, a soap smell so uh, if that continues to be the case I have just a little bit of this Cinnabon fragrance oil left I had used it in bath bombs and uh, this smells heavenly and it doesn't behave well in cold processed soap but I could use it in this application so I'm thinking if it just continues to mellow out and just smell like soap and no dominant fragrance I'm probably going to add this but I will wait until right at the end because I don't want this to dissipate off as it's cooking here um, and we'll see how this comes I may actually pull my piping bag out and do some little piping on top since it's going to be one color just to give a little interest um, but we're going to go about 20 more minutes and come back and stir again it's been about another 20 minutes and it's starting to get pretty liquidy around the sides so what I've done is I've taken my um, yellow pigment here and mixed it with a little bit of water uh, this is about a teaspoon of the pigment mixed in about just shy of an ounce of water 
So I'm just going to put a little in here when we mix it and we'll kind of see if we get a good color. I'm a little concerned. I don't want this to look like baby diaper color. <laughs> so if I need to mix this up and add something else, we will definitely do that. And again, that's one of the cool things about rebatching is that, you know, you can play around with it. It's, <laughs> it's going to be okay. I just don't want this to look like, you know how babies have that sort of mustardy poo when they're newborns. I don't want that to be this color. So let's see what we get and um, we'll just roll from there. As soon as I mixed it with the water and I saw what color it was, I've used this color many times in soap and it's beautiful, but um, yeah. I don't know if that's enough to bring it down. Run this around and feel through here and see what kind of chunks I have, if I have any chunks left. It's actually looking pretty fluid. This is uh, coming along very nicely. There's just a few um, flecks of soap shreds in there that I can see that are discernible but most of this is all melted and ready to go. So now we've just gotta think about the colors here. Really don't wanna add any more liquid and I'm not liking where that yellow's going. So let me see. I think this is pretty, why not? This is uh, my red obsession from Nurture Soap. Let's go ahead and try a little of this in here. You're coming along with me. Let's experiment together. So that's probably a quarter. There we go, about a half a teaspoon. And we'll just mix this and see how it looks and go from there. I should have mixed it around a little first. All right, let me knock down the sides here. Okay, well, gonna need some more mica because that is not a pretty color. That's about a teaspoon. Let's add that and see. And we'll just keep adding here and playing around with it till we get it where we like it. There we go. And I keep saying we so I don't feel like I'm doing this alone. You're coming along with me, you know? I wish uh, y'all were with me here. We could talk about it and you could give me suggestions as I'm doing this. I could use some help. <laughs> Another, probably a teaspoon's worth. There we go. So this is about two teaspoons worth of that Red Obsession color which I have used it in cold process is gorgeous. So this is a very different process. Um, please don't judge the color based on what I'm doing here because it's beautiful in cold process. There, that's looking better. At least it doesn't look like a baby diaper anymore. It's kind of a rusty red color and gotta just knock around all the corners here. The blender didn't get to the corners, but this is smooth. I think I'm going to be able to pipe some on top, which would be kind of fun since this is going to be a little boring looking in the middle. There's just a few more flecks in here. We're almost, I'd say we're about 97% there. Just got a little bit more. I'm thinking in about 15 or 20 minutes, this is going to be perfect and ready to get it in the mold. And if I'm going to pull, pull some off for a piping bag, We'll be ready for that too. So the lid's going to go back on and we will come back in uh, about 15 minutes. All right, we're back for the final time. And what, after I put the lid on, I just went ahead and turned this off because the radiant heat was going to keep it all warm in there. So the heat has been turned off. So that when we come in here and whip this up, I can add um, the rest of my fragrance oil. And oh my word, that smells good. I'm just gonna very slowly blend that in. And now I'm gonna whip this on high and try and incorporate a little air in here. Set that over there and just sort of knock down the sides and 
feel yeah that's looking good and it's pretty fluid so uh, what I'm gonna do I've got my um, piping bag here I'm gonna scoop a little into the piping bag um, and just set it off to the side and then I'll get the rest in the mold not a lot I just wanted to do a little interest on top and then I do have some bio glitter that I'd like to put down on top also so I'm gonna flip the top over here so that it won't dry out so I'm just gonna set that off to the side and let it sit here is my little uh, standard mold from Essential Depot and these are fabulous they're so sturdy now I've got my towel because this is hot let me see I'm gonna lift this out make some room here and what I'd like to do is just tip it up there we go use my body okay and that way I can hopefully just get it all plopped right in here and smush it around and this is very fluffy and airy so technically this should be a floating soap being a whipped a whipped soap and all that good stuff let's get it all down in here boy that smells good it's kind of a nice brick red color that's not bad at least it doesn't look like a baby diaper right I'm good with that I've changed plenty of those in my time I don't need a soap that looks like it you know I love me some baby diapers on a baby not on a soap <laughs> so let me get this uh, spatula cleaned off here and, and I'm gonna tap this down and then we'll come in with our little piping bag and hopefully just make some little stars or something on top and clean up the sides here a little All right. And let's see how this goes. Oh, it's very warm. <laughs> so uh, there, can you see? Just gonna do some little star points here. Just try and make it look a little prettier on top. Because that uh, hot process and rebatch soap can get kind of rustic looking on top and nothing wrong with that but little pretties are good too And it's the next day and um, I'm poking the sides here it feels very firm so we're gonna go ahead and try and unmold this so it's a little um, textury looking smells great so let's uh, get it in the cutter here Tighten my wire. Let's see what the inside looks like for texture. Cuts very smoothly, and uh, there we go. I mean, that's not bad for all those soap scraps. This is a nice, usable bar of soap. We'll give it a test here after I get these cut up. Let's see if it floats. This feels a little solid to me, so we'll see if the whipping worked or not. Let's get some more of these bars cut. But um, it was, I'm really glad I was able to use that fragrant oil, the Cinnabon that does not behave in cold process, but I was able to use it in this. So if you ever have a fragrance that's going to be a stinker on you, you know, this might be a good option. Well, let me tell you that color that I used in here. Um, does not it does not look like this in cold process that my red obsession is just gorgeous and um, this is sort of a rusty I think because of the yellow oxide that I put in there also and then all the other colors so please do not judge that color based on these this is kind of cool looking but um, that's not what the, 
not what it looks like in cold process, I can tell you for sure. So, based on last time's experience, using much less water or a liquid, this is much firmer. Um, the next day, the last time I did a whipped rebatch, I had to wait several days just to unmold it because I had put too much liquid in there. So that was definitely a learning curve to um, ease back on the liquids and it unmolds easier and it's got a nice, it's got a much smoother finish. And this is funny, there's, um, cause some of my soaps have botanicals on top and so when I shave them, sometimes botanicals can get in the bucket that right there is a little lavender bud that snuck past me and got in the bucket. So <laughs> this again, it's an interesting way to recycle soap scraps. But if you're a zero waste kind of person, you like to recycle, you don't like to create waste. Yeah, there's the other half of it right there. <laughs> um, this is a great way to recycle those soap scraps. All right, I've got a little end piece here. Let's uh, give it a float test and a lather test. So, not floating. Mm, well, sort of semi-floating, okay. But, let's see how it lathers. Wow, really creamy lather. Let me see just very silky smooth. There is a good lather here. It built up. It's nice. Uh, it's beautiful. Lather's nice. It's very soft feeling. So it's a good soap. Definitely a good way to recycle your soap. All right, here's the funny thing. I'm going to take my soaps made out of soap scraps and make soap scraps. <laughs> I think that's rather ironic and funny. But, you know, even these little ugly bars need to be prettied up. You know, why not? So, let me see. We'll put that down there. And I can't do a side stamp on these because they're too short, but I'll do a front stamp. And there we go. Little soap scrap bars. They're adorable. Usable. Great way to recycle.